The next part of the CNS examination involves the peripheral nervous system. The peripheral nervous system involves a first instance inspection. So I'm going to, and basically it's better for him to be undressed, maybe just down to the pants. He's in the short, uh, little short singlet, so that we can see all his muscles. So there he is, and we are going to begin the peripheral nervous system examination. So I'm going to tell him to um, stretch out his arms because we want to look at all his muscles. We first look for any evidence of wasting, fasciculations, that is like little twitches in his muscles or any involuntary movements. That is what you want to pick up on your peripheral nervous system inspection. So. The best thing is to let him stretch out his arms. So stretch out your arms like this for me. And then we can see every muscle in action and whether he has any involuntary movements or anything like that. And so if there is any marked muscle wasting, if it's proximal, usually we are thinking of muscle diseases. And if it's more peripheral, or wasting is more peripheral, then we think of what we call neuropathy, small diseases associated with nerve function to the muscle, neuropathy. So more distal wasting is associated with neuropathies and more proximal wasting is associated with myopathies or muscle disease. We can ask him to play the piano to see how, whether he has any funny movement. So play the piano for me. And then we can see if there's any cross asymmetry between the two sides or any obvious asymmetry. So he's doing everything. Well, you're doing well. You can stretch out your tongue. Let's also look at your tongue. It is good because that's an easy way to pick up what you call fasciculation in the tongue, where there are little tiny, tiny rippling movements in the tongue. And if there's any nerve palsy, that is also picked up. Stick it out. Okay, thank you very much. So that is the inspection. The next part of the inspection is to assess tone in a child. Um, children sometimes find it very difficult when you ask them that you want to assess their tone and you can sometimes fool them by just either rapidly flex and, and uh, pronate the arms this way and it's like a game or whilst you're doing that you ask them what do you have for breakfast and that's a good way of assessing tone. And another way is to go about is check for passive flexion and extension here at the elbow joint and then come down to the wrist joint and then let's check the tone. So you do that on both sides. Another easy way is to just check those both hands at the same time by letting him just wipe his fingers this way. And that's a very easy way of assessing tone. Tone is either increased or normal or reduced. And it's quite simple. Most times if you are confronted with a child with increased tone, that is spasticity. Then the commonest cause in, in pediatrics is cerebral palsy. So that finishes with tone. The next part in the assessment of the peripheral nervous system is assessing power. Many candidates end up confusing the child and themselves when they attempt to test the child's power. The crucial point are to have a very simple system rather than an exhaustive one. And also first to demonstrate what action you want the child to make using your own hand or arm. And I'll probably go through the power grading system now. Zero, we say power zero, that's there's no contraction at all. One is a flicker of contraction. Two is active movement with gravity eliminated. And that's often difficult to test. We say grade three when there's active movement against gravity. Grade 4 when there is movement against resistance and 5 when there is normal power. However, in an exam you are likely to be just expected to say whether power is normal, reduced or absent. So I am now going to demonstrate how you would test um, the, the power in a child. So the first thing is, we are testing C5, so we will say I am going to put his arms are 45 degrees away. Just maintain like 45 days. 
So we are testing simple financial push against me. Can you push your arms against me? No, yes, that's it. Do it, do it. No, slowly, slowly. Push, push, push. Slowly. So I try to push against you, and then I see that yes, you've got good power in your muscles. Good, well done. Now the next thing is we're going to test six and seven. So we're going to push it inwards like this, adduction. So we're going to push towards me like that. So push, push, push towards your body like this. Push towards here, no? Push, push towards inside this way. There, yeah, that's it. And let me resist you. That's it. No, push, continue. No, no, push. Push, push. Yeah, it's good. Well done, well done. So you've got strong man muscles here, fisherman's muscles, power. Good, well done. Good. So pushing his elbows away from his body whilst attempting to resist him was testing C5. Pushing his shoulders into his body, that is adduction, was testing C6, 7, and 8. So the next thing is to bend his arm at the elbow to a right angle and tell him to pull me towards you. So he bends his leg at an angle here and I say, pull me, pull me towards you. Very good. Well done. Well done. Good. Good. Well done. Can you push me too? Can you push? Can you push against me? Good. Well done. Well done. Can you make your hand into a fist? Tight fist. Push. Let me open it. Make it a fist, let me open it. Good. Good. So, this is a child who is demonstrating good strength. I asked him to make a, a fist and then let him bend my wrist against it. So at that, I was testing C6 and 7. Spread your fingers like this and don't let me squeeze them together. So that's the next instruction. Spread your fingers like that. Don't let me squeeze it together. So still try to maintain it like that. Spread. Good. Do it strong. Don't let me allow you to do it. So that's a testing it's intrinsic muscles in there. And that was testing T1. So this is a simple screen that will detect most cases of weakness in the upper limbs. The next step in, in the peripheral nervous system examination of this child is the reflexes. Reflexes are either absent, normal, or increased. Some children have quite brisk reflexes, but if there are no other signs of upper motor neuron weakness, then assume the reflexes are normal. So don't tell an examiner that you think the reflexes are brisk because they could be brisk in children. So I will now go ahead to demonstrate the reflexes in this child. Some children are frightened by your patella hammer coming and it's good to tell them that you're not going to strike them directly and that it's not any frightening instrument. In fact, the best thing is to use your own finger here and then tap your own fingers or play a little game first that this does not hurt and then place it there. So this is a slightly older child and so he has no problems at all. So I'm just going to tap this, it's not going to hurt. Alright, I'm testing your reflexes to see. So here, I'm banging my own finger and then seeing what kind of reflex I get. This is supernatal. Then I like to do the triceps here directly. You can do that by observing the muscle itself contract. So a little tap here, you can see a nice muscle contraction here. So I think it's a little reflex. So reflexes are either absent, normal, or increased. The next step in the peripheral nervous system examination is coordination. Coordination, as you know, is a function of uh, uh, normal motor, sensory, and cerebellar systems all working in unison. Again, therefore, do not make too much of these tests unless supported by other abnormal signs. So your tests of coordination are quite simple. Um, you can do finger-to-nose touching. So the idea is to tell the patient or child to touch your nose 
and then to touch his or her nose and then your finger and keep going until you say stop. You may actually have to take hold of the child's finger and show him what to do a few times. This test has not been performed correctly unless the movements are executed fairly quickly and you move your finger around the field of vision. So here I'm going to demonstrate that. So you know what you're going to do next for me. Mm -hmm. I want you to touch my your nose and then you touch my finger. Alright, and then touch my finger. Good, touch my finger now, this one. Touch it. No, with the same finger. Touch it. No, touch it now. Come and touch it, yes. Then go back. So you do it as fast as you can. Good, well done. Good. So the important thing is I'm doing it in this line of vision. And the idea is that you should do it as accurately as possible. So as you can see, he's touching exactly my the pulp of my fingertip. Very accurate. Very good. Well done. So by this test, we can pick up a child who has, let's say, intention tremor, or someone who has what we call pass pointing, so that his fingers overshoot mine and he can never get it accurate dead on. And that obviously is a sign of cerebellar disease. Other tests you can do is to find out whether a child has what we call this paracopenesia. That is, you can let him do alternating rapid formation and supination like this. Can you do this for me? Good. Good. Well done. Or touch each finger alternately like this. Good. Well done. Good. Well done. And then do this one. Good. Well done. Good. And go back forwards and back. Good. If the child is old enough, we can also go on to do a bit of writing and you have an idea of the child's coordination skills. So that says it all for coordination. The next step is sensation. You are unlikely to be asked to test, to test sensation in your exams. But if you have a long case, that's a long neurological long case, you'll be expected to test sensation. And normally the first is to light touch. And you can use just a wisp of cotton wool and demonstrate the sensation this will cause. And the next thing is to ask the child to close his eyes and to say yes immediately he feels you touch him. You touch the skin lightly at each of the following sites, but you do not rub the cotton wool along the skin. So the idea is if you touch the lateral surface of the upper arm, that is C5. Lateral surface of the upper arm here is C5. If you go to C6, C7, T1, these can all be delineated by just touching in these areas. The web between the index and middle fingers will be C7. Your tip of the little finger goes to T8. Medial surface of your lower arm is T1. This area is T1. And the medial surface of your upper arm is T2. So just to go over again, the lateral surface of your upper arm is C5. The tip of your thumb is C6. The tip of your thumb is C6. The web between the index and, uh, and little fingers is C7. The tip of your little finger is C8. This is T1 and this is T2. So it's just going down like this and coming up here. The next step in your peripheral nervous system examination is proprioception. So in the upper limb, what we do is we do take the middle phalanx, the distal phalanx of the middle finger and demonstrate to the child what we mean. So the first thing is to tell the child to close your eyes and then use fairly rapid excursion. So if I move this way, it means up, and this way it means down. So the child is made aware of this, and the next thing is for the child to close their eyes. So close your eyes, and when I go up, you tell me, or down. So as you can see, I'm not holding the, the tip of the phalanx, but I'm holding the sides, and just a small change can actually be detected by a normal child. So if I go up, Am I up or down? Tell me. Good. Well done. Good. 
And the idea is not to do it in any pattern so that you can tell whether truly the child can pick up any movement. Up or down. Good, well done. Good. Okay. Down. Excellent. So, conditions that can give you a perceptive loss. Maybe conditions like with a bar syndrome or a child, for instance, who's been on a Christian therapy for cancer or a um, common condition like Friedrich's ataxia. So these are the main causes of a child who will suffer from perceptive loss.